Hey guys, morning. It's uh, Wednesday morning, a little after 7 a.m., 7.24 to be exact. And I have you over here on windy.com. This is the 7 a.m. modeling on the European model, which they do 10 minute averages on wind speeds, as opposed to the GFS, which does. Uh, one minute averages GFS HRRR model which I'm going to show you on Venture Sky in a moment anyway the top wind speed I'm getting on uh, windy is 70 miles an hour in the uh, east east quadrant so as usual they're lying about these hurricane wind speed as you can see as I move it all around it's color coded so I mean I'm looking for anything in the purple get closer to the eye the wind speed goes down of course well I guess not of course but that's been my experience anyway as I've been tracking these hurricanes for the last couple of years. So, they're a uh, lion. Uh, they got the wind speed at 140 miles an hour, which is double, which is about par for the course, really. You can almost uh, divide it by two, whatever wind speed they're telling you. These hurricanes are on the Weather Channel or AccuWeather or any other weather shows that get their information from the government and these are all this is all government data coming from government satellites and they're run on these different computer models so there you have it okay I, it's gonna make landfall around noon up close to Panama City well the last time I looked it was going to be around noon but as you can see the wind speed 81 so it's coming up a little bit let's bump it up to 2 p.m. I guess that's going to be more like it 2 p.m. now on this European model they must have just updated it and the wind speed's going to be around a uh, top wind speed's going to be around 88 which is nothing to nothing to sneeze at no doubt but the precip well it doesn't show up good on this model on this magnification so I have to back it out then we got the precip the precip's fairly low because um, people have been putting out the vinegar And I'm going to show you that here on the goes. So we're going to pause it as close as possible. Okay, that's the last run. <clears throat> 11.02 UTC. So take five hours off that. So that's 6.02 Eastern Daylight Time. Here's the, um, on the water vapor imagery on the lowest level which is uh, from the surface up to I'd say around uh, well the troposphere is 33,000 feet so and this they have the lower level mid level and upper level water vapor imagery and I think they all three overlap so the lower level overlaps up into the mid level and goes probably to about mid range maybe 16,000 feet 17,000 feet but anyway, here's my point. You can see the, um, these are the clouds, and you can see how they're higher. Well, they've been chem bombing the crap out of this thing ever since it got into the Yucatan. Down here, when they started forecasting this thing to become a uh, major hurricane, well, you know, they've been helping it out all along the way. Now here's Michael on uh, Venture Sky. 
that's at 8 a.m. Well, I can't get a wind speed. Uh, so this is going to be the wind speed at 8 a.m. They go in three hour increments on the wind speed. Well, that's actually precip. You can see the precip's breaking up, like I was trying to point out to you on the uh, water vapor imagery. See how the precip's breaking up. So here's Vinci Sky. There's the precip. You can see it's breaking up. The people are uh, putting out vinegar and it's getting sucked up into this storm. Here's the wind speed on the uh, her oh, automatic her plus icon. Well, that's a little bit different. They used to be the GFS plus icon plus her, which are both uh, American. But as you can see, the uh, the her calculates at a one minute mean average, so that brings the uh, sustained wind speed up make it 14% greater than 10 minute sustained wind speed. Now, since they've got these two combined, because the icon, I believe, is a 10 minute wind speed mean average, and the her is a one minute, so this might be a little bit more accurate. But I'd still be leaning more toward the 10 minute. But anyway, at 8 a.m., this is where they have the uh, wind speed. Just a week at two at the most, 98. 99 and I saw 100 in there so the uh, Saffir Simpson hurricane scale cat one's 74 to 95 so cat two's 96 to 110 so we got it as a weak cat two on Vinci sky at a hundred and Why well, I showed you and I showed you what it was on Windy. No more than a cat one, regardless. Now this is my uh video I did on Florence and this was exciting for me because this really shows you what I'm talking about, how the vinegar just destroys the clouds because your vinegar has acetic acid in which is chemically opposite to the alkaline salts that they use primarily to uh, attract moisture and form clouds in the chemtrails and you can see this whole stack of clouds going all the way up so that's at least 16,000 feet of clouds if not more I would say more and maybe all the way up to the top of the troposphere which is 33,000 feet and you can see the vinegar just eroded the crap out of it and uh, there's the evidence right there this is from my uh, 9 15 18 Florence exciting news <clears throat> 1 p.m. update video so, I mean, here's South Carolina. You can see they got freaking hardly any freaking rain there. They got some quite a bit of rain up here. But, uh, did you guys ever see this one? They laid out a $20,000 fine if you flew a drone in North Carolina. This was right after Florence. Well, say it was about a week after Florence that this article popped up let's see if there's a date on here well I mean this order popped up that I became aware of anyway okay September the 14th okay so that was right during Florence they weren't allowed drones or right after Florence was almost winding up and uh, I mean that's just totally ludicrous why can't people fly drones to look for uh, survivors and so forth and so on my contention is they did it to cover up their dam breaches okay that's what's been happening with these hurricanes if they don't produce the effect that they want then what'll 
happen is dams will be breached. It happened in Matthew, back North Carolina in Matthew a couple years back. It happened big time for Katrina over in New Orleans when I think there's still reports floating around on the internet about, and it's NBC even, has one up that's about uh, Katrina's levees being blown up. The residents in the Ninth Ward heard explosions, <clears throat> and then the, that's when the flooding occurred. And in my opinion, that's clearly what happened in uh, North Carolina and South Carolina, because there's no way they freaking got enough rain to justify all those rivers continuing to swell and swell and swell and swell for weeks. I mean, that's just that's ludicrous. I just I just don't believe it. So anyway, here's the current uh, satellite imagery. Let's see if we can get it up. There it is, 11.02. That's pr pretty close to the last of this run. It might have went up a few more minutes since I've been on, on the video. There it is. There's Matthew. You can see it's being eroded on the uh, eastern side. And the yellow and the oranges are the dry air. It's they got it color coded, but so even the blue and the whites, you're not gonna find much precipitation. So I mean they're gonna keep chem bombing this thing. You can believe that for however long they think it's going to be to their advantage in creating this disaster situation. The only thing I can attribute it to is well. Satan's the God of this world. Check out my prophecy blog. It's uh, it's all in there. Georgia Guidestones kind of reflects where they're trying to go with this thing. That's why they don't mind wiping people out. Then you got Agenda 21 and 2030, which pretty much is returning a lot of the land back to wilderness states. Wilderness state. And they would like to ultimately get the population down to 500 million. That's one of the main tenets on the George Guidestones. So we have like 7 billion plus people right now in the world. And they would like to see that number be reduced to 500 million. So that means they have no problem or qualms about 6.5 billion people meeting their end. So here's Michael again on Vinci Sky, and I switched it over just to the straight icon, which is actually the uh, European model, and you can see it's way much lower than that HRRR US model, which is only one minute mean averages on wind speed calculations as opposed to 10 minutes, which I, I, I'd say would say have to be a whole lot more accurate. Here's the preset model. You can see it's pretty well contained and it's getting eroded from the uh, west side now. Let's see what it is on the uh, automatic, which brings in the HRRR. And that's pretty much doesn't really change much on the precept. It's just the wind speed that that HRRR, because it's only a one minute uh, mean average as opposed to a 10 minute mean average. The precept, that would have no effect whatsoever on mean averages so that's just another reason to show you that the HRRR model which calculates wind speed isn't only a one minute mean average makes the value at least 14 percent greater i'd say at least and that's pretty showing up pretty pretty clearly so all i can say is guys keep uh, pouring out the vinegar and above all man seek the lord because this is the only way out of this thing it's all coming to a close soon god's gonna wrap this thing up and Lucifer, Lucifer's rebellion is going to be put down once and for all. And you don't want to be on the wrong side of that. And you have to choose. So choose wisely. All right. God loves you. I love you. Peace. And I'm out.